Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are on the screen today with Melinda Topham. Many of you will remember she was here a whole year ago, practically. She is with Just Serve. We are going to talk today about their Community Connect and Serve event. That's what she was here talking about last September. They are doing it again this September. And Melinda, I'm really glad that you had time to chat with me about this because I think this is one of the coolest events, not even just for nonprofits, but it's a great event event for those in the community that want to do something, they want to help, they want to volunteer, but they just don't know where to start. This event checks all the boxes for all of the peoples. This is an amazing event for that. It does put everyone in the same room at the same time. Last time we had over 30 nonprofits in the room, so you can come and see them all at one place. Not only is it amazing for that, for volunteer opportunities, but it's great for the nonprofits to be able to connect and collaborate together. Also, if you're in need of services or you have someone in need, it's a great way to find out what's available. It's the perfect way to connect the whole community together. You have structured this so that those things get to happen in their own little bubble. So the event is on Thursday, September 28th from 3 to 7, but from 3 to 5 is that nonprofit networking portion. And then from 5 to 7 is the open to the community portion, which I think makes a lot of sense too. Yes, it works really well. The three to five is just for nonprofits. They can collaborate, find out things that they didn't know that other nonprofits do, find similar services. How can we best collaborate and work together to really meet the needs of our community members? And just to, yeah, get out of the office and to see who your partners are, see and network with those that are like-minded and doing similar things as you. So that's a really great time for the three to five. And then five to seven, yeah, open it up to the community where you can come find those volunteer opportunities, find out services that you might need. And the networking can continue with those nonprofits as well throughout that time. I talk to a lot of nonprofits doing this radio show, and I don't want to say there's a lot of turnover, but we have a lot of new people that come and go from nonprofits. So this is extra beneficial for them because they may be new in their position and don't know who the other people are or what the services are that they offer. My experience on the United Way board has shown me that so many nonprofits have their service that they offer to the community, but maybe the person that they're helping needs other things. They don't always readily know where to send them to get those other things. This helps fill that gap as well. Every nonprofit does a wonderful job at meeting their need. They found a need and they're filling that need really beautifully. But sometimes you can't fill all the needs, right? And you need to know who to partner with and where to send them. So this provides that opportunity for referrals as well. And this event is put on by a group. It's not just you and Shannon at Just Serve. It's got the Community Foundation of Northern Shenandoah Valley, Top of Virginia Regional Chamber, the Nonprofit Alliance of Northern Shenandoah Valley, Valley Health obviously is part of it. United Way is obviously part of it. You guys all come together and say, hey, this is something we should do. And all of you are there participating that day as well. Yeah, it's been a great collaborative effort on our part. We've had the steering committee that includes all of those groups you mentioned. And so then we can find out really what are those needs in the community? What do the nonprofits need? What can we do to benefit and make it the most impact at this event? I remember when you and Janin were here last year talking about it and it was the first year and you were both so nervous because you weren't sure (laughs) it was a first year event. You're never really sure. Are people going to show up? Is it going to be beneficial to the nonprofits for being there and setting up a table that day? But I heard nothing but great things about how that event went its first year. Oh, that's so good to hear. We thought it went fantastic. We had more support than we hoped for. Filled the room. It's a full-size gym, and we were almost completely full. I heard that some found out that there were services that they didn't know about. Oh, I don't have to do that service because now I know that that's provided by another nonprofit. And I think there were some unexpected finds like that just within their own community. That was really beneficial. And it's fun just to mix and mingle. You don't get that chance. Like you say, you're in your office at your desk doing your own thing, and it's really good to make those friendships and partnerships with those others. And it's a different kind of networking. If you're going to, say, a chamber function, then you're networking in a different way as the director of a nonprofit than you would if you're at an event like this where everybody else is also a nonprofit. You're not having to put on that face of, I need to be prepared to ask for money or I'm planning a fundraiser. These are your people that you're going to get to talk to and mingle with, which is a whole different vibe than when you go to a professional networking event. It's a whole lot more friendly and a whole lot more social. 
Yes. It's a fun, friendly environment where you just get to know each other, share what you offer and your services, find out what other people offer. We just sat down at dinner and we just got to know each other, find out where they're from, what are they working on, what's important to them, what values do they see, what needs do they see in the community. And it's just an opportunity to just put a name with the face sometimes and just understand what each other's working on. It was really laid back, casual event. And hopefully the goal would be at the end of the day that some of these people make subgroups and now they're meeting as directors or, oh, we see this housing need. Let's get together and let's talk more about housing or let's talk more about food insecurity or we're more interested in the arts and how can we bring the arts forward? So let's get together and let's do a little pilot subgroup here on the side. The long-term goal would be that they would meet and mingle and then continue and follow up with some of those relationships. And I'm guessing too, that they probably find that they already possibly share volunteers or Mm -hmm. that they could share volunteers, because I'm sure there are some nonprofits out there that have volunteers and say, Hey, I'd really like to do more, but that particular nonprofit may only need X, Y, Z on this day from this time. And they don't want to send someone away, this is going to give them the ability to say, hey, you can help us on Thursdays from noon until four, but on Tuesdays and Fridays, this nonprofit over here needs you to do the same thing for them that you do for us. It is a win-win. That is a win-win. That is a beautiful relationship because there are a lot of wonderful giving people out there that that do have time They have or their talents or they have treasures to give. And they have more than one nonprofit needs. So on the one hand, it's a great way to match where your passion lies. You might find that one nonprofit that really speaks to you. So this is where I really want to give of myself. But like I say, sometimes they you, they have more needs or they might refer you to someone else. And the joy of it all is when they collaborate together. I'm in an event for CCAP this weekend, and there's collaborative efforts from volunteers from out of the community, from churches, and everyone comes together. We're all in this right? The end goal is the same to just serve and help each other. And you mentioned a second ago that everybody sets up and has a table in the gym. And when you say in the gym, it's at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on Apple Pie Ridge Road. You could not have picked a better location. It's easy to get in and out of. There's a ton of parking. And it, like you said, has the space for everybody to be able to set up and to come and go and to meet and greet and do all of the things that they would need to do for an event like this. Yeah, it is a great location. There's a full-size gym, so there's plenty of room for table space. Everyone set up a table of four to six feet. They have all of their information. And then we were able to set up a meal in a couple of other rooms. So there's a lot of space. And it is easy to get to. There's plenty of parking. We really love to have people come, and it's a very friendly, open environment. From three to five is when the nonprofits network with each other. We're a month out. At, yeah, we're a little over a month out from the event. Is it too late now for a nonprofit that's listening today to say, hey, I didn't know this was happening. I want to be a part of it and sign up. What's involved with that? Sign up is super easy. Flyers and emails gone out to most nonprofits. If you haven't seen it, then you can go to the top of Virginia Regional Chamber website on their calendar. I haven't Googled. Community Connect and Serve 2023, it popped right up, led me right to the Chamber's website, and I could register right there. So it's super easy. If you do happen to see a flyer and email, there's a QR code right there you can click on and register. And we just need to know who's coming and how much space you need. Let's take a break. When we come back, let's talk a little bit about the other side, the community side of it. What happens from five to seven? Who should come to that? What they can expect when they get there? Can we do all that in the next segment? Sounds great. We are on the screen recording today with Melinda Topham. She is representing Just Serve. We're going to talk about that a little bit too when we come back, what that organization is. But right now we're talking about the Community Connect and Serve. Again, it's happening Thursday, September 28th from 3 until 7 p.m. at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on Apple Pie Ridge Road in Winchester. We're going to get more details in just a couple of minutes. Hi, I'm Martine, a senior at Mountain Vista Governor School. Together with environmental nonprofit Sustainability Matters, we're rebranding recycling. Did you know that the rules of recycling vary dramatically by location? Some facilities take glass, others don't. Some take many kinds of plastic, others only take bottles. How can you know how to recycle right? Look for the rules listed on your local recycling or solid waste department's website. For more information on how we're rebranding recycling, Look for hashtag rebranding recycling on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, or visit sustainabilitymatters.earth. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are on the screen today with Melinda Topham. She is representing Just Serve. We're going to talk about that organization in a second, but we've been talking about Community Connect and Serve. It is a really cool event happening Thursday, September 28th from 3 p.m. until 7 p.m. So three to five, Melinda, is for the nonprofits to network with each other, find out who's doing what, do face-to-face meet and greets and chill with each other for a little bit. But then from five to seven, it opens up to the general community. And that's where people like me, parents that have high school kids that want them to be involved, church groups, pastors, school counselors, all of these people can come in that evening from five to seven and learn about all the nonprofits and what volunteer needs they have and what community services they offer. Yeah. Where else do you have 40 some nonprofits under one roof? where you can go and find who speaks to you. Where do you want to put your energies? Where do you want to serve? So it is perfect. It's for for school groups, for National Honor Societies, key clubs, all of those kind of high school groups, as well as employer groups that offer volunteer service hours. Come and see what's available, where you're willing to go and, and serve in the community. What kind of group events can you do? Or maybe you just want to do it individually. Or where can you go as a whole family? It's really a wonderful opportunity to find out what's available and where your services match. We were talking a little bit during the break about the recent Project Connect that United Way did in Winchester. And one of the things that really kind of surprised me, I don't know why it surprised me, but it did, was the number of employees that were volunteering at that event because their company gave them the day off to do so and didn't just give them the day off and said, you're getting docked your pay. They paid them to go and be involved. Navy Federal Credit Union pays their employees to go and be involved in community events. Continental did the same thing. There are a lot of companies out there that want to be able to offer this as a service to their staff, but don't know where to send them. This is going to check that box. Absolutely checks that box. We would invite any employer groups or volunteer coordinators to come and find out those opportunities or just as an individual, where can I do my service hours? Where do I want to serve? Not where they're going to send me. Where can I apply to serve and get those hours? You were also telling me during the break that your church in particular, your congregation learned all of the different things that they could go and do and really got out there and got more involved in the community. I can't imagine that there is a pastor or a church out there that doesn't want to be able to offer this information to their entire congregation. Yeah, we had one church leader that talks about getting that event. And he said, you know, I kind of went kicking and screaming, honestly. I didn't really think I had the time to go. It wasn't convenient, but I went there and he said, I'm so glad I did. It changed everything in the way that they serve as a group. They have now gotten some service coordinators for the young men, young women groups, for the men's group, for the women's group. Each group has now partnered with a community agency or a nonprofit so that they can get out and serve. So what a great place to find out who those people are. I know their youth group is out cleaning the park once a month with Winchester Parks and Rec. Isn't that phenomenal? It really was inspiring to help people want to get out there and serve. And you can't get into any kind of college these days without having this education resume of sorts. Those of us in the workforce know what a resume looks like. The kids that are graduating high school and going off to college need their own resume now. And it needs to include some of these community service projects and being involved and helping in their community. This is going to check all those boxes as well. Yes, this is a great place to up that resume for the youth. A lot of them need 50 to 100 hours of community service. And so not only this helps them find that, but if they use Just Serve, that's also a great place to find these opportunities to serve. And on JustServe.org, it's also an app on your phone. They can record those hours and they can keep track of the hours that they've served. So that's another really great perk and opportunity for those who need to up their resume. One of the benefits too, when Josh was younger, I always wanted him to understand and to be involved in the community, but I drug him to the things that I believed in. I drug him to the nonprofits and the different volunteer things that I wanted to do. This really gives these kids a little more freedom to say, you know what, mom, I think it's great that you want to deal with the homeless population, but I really want to work over here with food insecurity. They have the freedom to be able to look and to choose and then to give in something that impacts them personally. Yeah, there's absolutely something for everyone. We all have our passions. We all have what's important to us and where we want to give. And who we see is the greatest need or just something that we believe in. 
Clicking on Just Serve, if you're 13 or older, you can have your own account and put in your preferences. And then those things will pop up that match what you're looking for. You can put in your zip code and actually anywhere in the most places in the world, anywhere in the United States for sure. It's also in some other countries, but you can put in that zip code if you're traveling and it will populate with the service opportunities that are going on right there where you are. So it gives an opportunity for you, yes, to find what's really meaningful to you. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about the Just Serve organization. Explain how it works. It's an app. It's a website that organizations post their project needs. So it might be a long-term project. It might be something that you need to apply for. You can go and work there long-term, or it might be there's a one-time event and we need volunteers on Saturday at three o'clock to come pass out water to the runners. It does both. They're posted on this website and you as the registered user can find that project that works for you. You click on that project, get some more information. There's the contact information there. You can either call that person or you can push the volunteer button, volunteer either right on Just Serve or it will redirect you to that volunteer organization's website, to that nonprofit's website. It's super easy to find volunteer service and to sign up to serve. It's like the app version of this event because it plays dual roles in that nonprofits should know about it so they can go put their projects in. And at the same time, us, the community, the residents can go and search what those projects are and decide which ones they want to work at. Yes, it's like the perfect match. So we highly encourage nonprofits to go in and put their own projects onto Just Serve. And yes, then it allows anyone in the community to go and find them and see what those projects are. When someone has a project, they're like, oh, we need more volunteers. Who are we going to call next? Where can we find volunteers? It's right there. Hopefully volunteers will find you. Everybody needs volunteers, whether it's a long-term planned event or suddenly a half a dozen of the people you thought were going to show up can't show up because... COVID is on the rise or any number of other issues are happening. This is a great way to be able to fill those slots. Absolutely. I'm looking at the website and there's, there's just hundreds of opportunities. So there's no limit to what you can do and where you can serve. I imagine you'll be wandering around at the community connect and serve talking to the nonprofit saying, did you know about this app and have you put your projects on here? <laughs> yes, we will be making sure that they are either know about it, that they're already on it or we'll get them on it and hopefully get those that come signed up. And you don't have to be a registered user to use Just Serve. You can go put in justserve.org and you can find those opportunities. As a user, it just helps you to record your hours to be able to keep track of what you're doing and have your preferences and populate it to more match what you're looking for. That's good to know because that's always nice to have information in your back pocket if you're going somewhere and can say somebody says, yeah, I don't know. We don't know what we're going to do this weekend or something. Hey, did you know that Habitat is doing a build this weekend and they could really use 10 people to come paint or something along those lines? Just having that random knowledge always makes you popular at a party or a get together. <laughs> Absolutely. Pull out your app and look what's going on. So that's where it's fun too, is you get to know your community. Who's here? What's going on? So Community Connect and Serve offers that opportunity to physically see and talk to and be with those in the community. Just Serve app allows you to just scroll through from your home, but see who's there, see what's happening, what events are going on. And maybe you're looking for a need or a resource for your own family member or for someone you work with. And here's a chance to find out, well, what resources, who offers that type of service that I need for my child, for my coworker, whether it's housing, food, mental health, mentoring for children, whatever service you might need, there's probably a nonprofit that does it. And here's the place you can find it. And this event too is going to be a very, and I've used this phrase so many times over the last couple of weeks, but this event is going to be a very low barrier event for someone who is in need of those services to be able to come and see who's at their table that offers what. It may even be something they didn't know they needed or they didn't know was something a nonprofit offered until they're there. And now they're going to have that opportunity to start that conversation. 
Yeah, absolutely. I had a friend who came specifically looking for ways to volunteer. And she said, what I didn't expect was to find services for my special needs son. She was able to find those opportunities and services available to her and to others that she knew. And that's not what she expected to find. So it's not only for volunteers, but also, yes, it's very low barrier. Anyone is welcome to walk through those doors and to find services. They're not necessarily offering those services at that location, but to get those numbers and that contact is invaluable. And this event is a free event. It's free for nonprofits to register and set up a table and participate in that day. But it's also free for the community to come and attend from five to seven. They don't have to register in advance. They don't have to pay anything, get a ticket. They literally just show up and walk in the door. Show up and come. Just come and see. Even if you only have 10 minutes, at least just come and see. Never hurts to just find out what's out there. And you get the opportunity to see the inside of that beautiful church. (laughs) That in and of itself. Yes. How many times have people driven by that church and gone, oh, I wonder what that looks like on the inside. Now is your opportunity to come and see the church. Yes, doors are open. Saturday Saints on Apple Pie Ridge Road. (laughs) Just come on in. 399 Apple Pie Ridge Road. The doors will be open to the public 5 to 7 on the 28th of September. Tell me again, where can people go get information about Just Serve? What is the easiest first place for them to go? So the easiest place is justserve.org. It's that simple. You can register. You can see what's available in your community. You can also download the app, Just Serve, if you'd like as well. We have several Just Serve specialists in each of the cities, and you can put in the information there to get, to find out who that is. You can always contact me or Shannon as well. And while you're talking about different specialists in the area, so this particular event mainly serves Winchester, Frederick, and Clark counties. Yes, mainly those services that are available in our counties here. And you've There's done also- one in Shenandoah County already, and you and I were talking during the break, we're going to make one happen in Warren County, one way or the other, it's yes. going to happen. <laughs> we will make it happen. It's been on the radar, it's something we really want to see happen. They had a really successful event in Shenandoah County in the spring and are planning to make it a yearly event. And this is our second annual event here for Winchester, Frederick and Clark. And the cool part about that, too, is that people can, even now, people can live in Warren County, but maybe they work in Winchester and they would rather volunteer or do something for an agency that's in Winchester. And as, again, we were talking about during the break, a lot of these agencies serve the entire area. So even if you live in Warren, you may come to this event in Winchester and meet an agency that also services Warren County anyway. So it's a win-win on both sides. Yeah, absolutely. There were several there last year that covered the whole region. Just Serve, like I said, is, is everywhere. Some go down as far as Page County, Shenandoah County, Warren County. So it is nice to come and see who's local to you. We just cross boundaries, right? The whole community, Shenandoah Valley, we're all kind of one. So where can people get more details about Community Connect and Serve? Where's a good first place for them to start for that? Go to the Top of Virginia Regional Chamber website, regionalchamber.biz. There's the registration right there and more information. And I'll put a link in the show notes page as well. So people that are listening can just go to the valleytodaypodcast.com and find it there as well. You can't have it in too many places. Absolutely not. We have two flyers out there, one to the nonprofits and one for the community at large. Again, the nonprofits are invited from three to seven and the community, it's open door from five to seven. Melinda, thank you for taking some time to give me all the details. I'm excited. I didn't make it last year, but it is on my calendar for this year. So I'm definitely coming this year. Awesome. I will expect to see you and bring your friends. I'm going to bring everybody. I'm going to tell them we're going out to dinner, but we're going to stop there first. (laughs) It'll be well worth your time. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. (laughs) And they'll thank you later. I will be back tomorrow with a brand new episode of The Valley Today. As a matter of fact, we're continuing our nonprofit theme, and it is United Way Day on the screen tomorrow. We are talking with Dawn Devine and Tammy Stevenson from the Shenandoah Valley Discovery Museum, along with, of course, Casey Childress, CEO of United Way Northern Shenandoah Valley. Meet me back here for that conversation just a few minutes after noon.